to Freddy's coming for you. A Nightmare on Elm Street is another surprisingly good game from LJN, a publisher notorious for making some of the worst games on the NES, like their terrible X-Men abomination. While LJN is certainly guilty for cashing in on the popularity of licensed properties like Beetlejuice or Back to the Future, they were just the publisher. LJN would hire other companies to actually develop the games. Luckily for A Nightmare on Elm Street, development duties were handled by Rare, the UK-based developer that brought us hits like Wizards and Warriors, Snake Rattle and Roll, and of course, Battletoads. Due to Nintendo's strict censorship policies, making a game based on an R-rated horror franchise was not going to be easy. The movies tell the story of Freddy Krueger, a sadistic Ted Bundy-esque serial killer that had murdered at least 20 children. When a botched investigation leads to Krueger's acquittal, parents in the community took the law into their own hands and burned Freddy alive. Now Freddy's vengeful ghost stalks the dreams of his killer's children. And of course, if you die in one of Freddy's nightmares, you die in real life. Whatever you do, don't fall asleep. Rare's original concept for the game was a unique one where you'd play as Freddy and had to murder the teens trying to get rid of your bones. It was likely that this was just too edgy for the NES, so instead they followed in the official Nintendo tradition and made a side-scrolling platformer. There's no blood or gore, but Rare did a good job of incorporating elements from the movie series. You start out as a regular teen investigating the houses on Elm Street, but if you stand around for too long, you'll fall asleep and be pulled into Freddy's Nightmare. In the dream world, you'll have special abilities, like in 1987's Nightmare on Elm Street 3, Dream Warriors. You can transform into the Acrobat, the Necromancer, or the Shadow Warrior to combat the horrors of the nightmare. But if you stay asleep for too long, Freddy will come for you and force a showdown. The game soundtrack was composed by David Wise, who did music for many other rare games, including Wizards and Warriors, Battletoads, and Donkey Kong Country. His work is moody and gives the game a dark atmosphere. He even included a version of the 1-2 Freddy's Coming For You song that plays when you've been asleep for too long. Even better, this is one of the few NES games that allows four players simultaneous action. Double Dragon struggled to get a two-player mode working, and Rare went above and beyond here to create an exciting multiplayer experience. Just like in the movies, if one kid falls asleep, they will pull the others into the nightmare so you can fight Freddy together. Many years later, Rare would develop GoldenEye 007 for the Nintendo 64, another game that would become famous for its four-player mode, but Rare started dabbling with four-player games all the way back here on the NES. The game was mildly successful for LJN when it released in 1990. While some critics criticized the game for not taking advantage of Kruger's more interesting forms from the movies, it was praised for being unusually good for a game based on a film. In modern times, the game is still appreciated by a cult following of fans. Surprisingly, it does not appear on IGN's list of the top 100 NES games of all time. While the game itself is a pretty typical platformer, the four-player cooperative mode is something special and is a classic gaming experience that deserves some notoriety. Modern players that attempt this game will still have to deal with all of the challenges the NES is notorious for. Rare made some of the most difficult games on the system, and while this game gives you a generous amount of lives and continues, enemies constantly respawn, 
you can easily be knocked back into instant death pits, and the game's finale features an incredibly difficult boss gauntlet to fight through. But what if I told you the best ways to take advantage of your many dream powers? What if I told you a secret trick to skip the bosses in the final gauntlet? And what if I told you how to defeat all of the game's nightmare bosses? Even Freddy himself? Well, on today's episode of You Can Beat Video Games, we'll learn all of that and more. If you're new to the channel, we're doing deep dives on retro video games and giving you the professional strategies that can be used by the casual gamer. Please make sure to subscribe and click the bell for notifications so you don't miss any new videos. Let's get started. All right, a nightmare on Elm Street. Our hero in the game is a nameless teenager, but I always thought it was Glenn Lance, who is the male lead from the first movie, played by Johnny Depp. When you appear on Elm Street, you'll be in front of a house. You want to press up and see if you go inside the house. I tried that one and it did not work. So you have to start making your way to the right if you don't go inside. The first three houses are randomly assigned. It could be any of the first three. So when we get in front of this one, we're going to press up again, and that time this was it. Now the inside of the house is not random, so the first house will always be the same inside. You want to collect that bone, and down below you see there's a power-up that can turn you into the acrobat whenever we enter the dream world, but we want to avoid it. There's going to be a lot of opportunities to get the acrobat power, but we do want to make sure that we collect every single one of Freddy's bones. If you miss a single bone, you're going to have to go back to get it, because the game will not let you move forward. Make sure to get this bone that's down on this moving platform, and then we can punch this spider right in the face. Take that spider, and then punch a couple bugs. Yeah, eat fist bugs. And over here we'll find another bone, and then we'll drop down to the bottom where we can find the final four bones and then enter the basement. Here in the basement we need to find more bones and we should focus now on our sleep meter which is in the upper left corner right underneath our score. Whenever that meter is completely depleted we will enter the dream zone but if you collect this coffee item our sleep meter will be refilled. Now, there's going to be some times when we actually want to be in the dream zone, and we're going to collect our first dream power-up right over here, which will be able to turn us into the acrobat whenever we fall asleep. The downside of falling asleep is if you stay asleep for too long, Freddy will come for you and you'll have to fight him, so we want to go to the dream realm only at strategic times. If you've collected all of the bones, the boss will spawn over here, and whenever you fight a boss in this game, it automatically transfers you to the Dream Realm, so you can press Select to transform into the Acrobat. The first boss is Freddy's Glove, but for some reason it's attached to that chain of red balls, so if you stand over here on the left side of the screen and just keep attacking, it'll never be able to reach you. Yeah, genius creation there, Freddy. So terrifying. Defeating the boss will get you an extra life and a key that will open up one of the other two houses in the first three. I'm going to go to the right here. Hopefully it's this one, but if it's not, we'll have to go all the way back to the beginning and try that house. So let's see, is it this one? It is. Okay, so that's lucky. At the beginning of this house, we want to grab these bones here at the top of this platform and then head over to the right. We do not need that acrobat power-up that you see down below. We already have the acrobat power-up. Now, you might wonder, why are there so many superfluous power-ups in this game? Well, it's possible that you could be playing with four players, and you would need to get all of them powered up. So that's why there's a lot of extra power-ups just littered about in this game. You only need one copy of each one. Grab the last few bones and head up the stairs. 
this is our first attic level. Up here in the attic, we'll need to find more bones. Watch for the ones that are up in the corners with the spider webs. Those can be difficult to see. You'll want to take this platform up to the top and collect that bone on the left, then move over to the right and drop down to the bottom to collect that bone. And then punch these two bugs, because now is a very good time to wait until we go to the Dream Realm, so I'm going to speed this up a little bit. Just wait it out. We want to be able to use our Acrobat form here. It's going to make this part a lot easier, and we'll have plenty of time to get to the boss before Freddy attacks us. So we can use our enhanced jumping ability, and we'll also be able to throw our javelin. We don't want to touch that boom box. That will wake us up, and then we'll have to wait around until we fall asleep again. Grab this pair of bones and head over to the right. Only two more bones to go, don't miss that one up in the spider web. And once you grab the last bone, we can head over to the right and fight our second boss, Freddy's head, also on a chain. This one's a little more difficult, so you want to be a bit more aggressive with it. It unleashes those... we're gonna call them tongues. Yeah, they're, they're definitely tongues, right? That will flop around the room and attack you. Whenever they first come out, sometimes they'll walk around on the ground, and if you duck down and throw a javelin, you can destroy the tongue in that way, so it's good to try to control those. You don't want there to be too many of them on the screen at one time. Once the boss is defeated, you'll get your key and another extra life, and we need to head all the way back to the beginning of the game to go in the third and final house. Now in your game, it could be a different house. It's going to be whichever of the first three houses you haven't gone into yet. But for our game, it's the one all the way back at the beginning of Elm Street. So we're going to make our way over to the left. We may have to punch a few snakes along the way. So kneel down and punch them in the face. Get out of here, snake. Those zombies are called shamblers. And here it is, the third and final house. Do not miss the bone that is in the upper left corner right where you enter the house. That one is easy to miss. If you miss even a single bone, you'll have to go back and find it. So if you miss the one at the very beginning of the level, that is quite a disaster. In the movies, there was two ways that you could defeat Freddy. You could either become a master of the dream world and fight him in the dream space, or you could find his bones and then consecrate them in some way. This game incorporates both approaches. You'll become powerful in the dream world and fight Freddy, but we're also going to find his bones and eventually destroy them in the furnace at Elm Street High. Don't miss the necromancer icon as we collect the bones on the bottom there and make sure to grab that yin-yang icon, which will allow us to transform into the Shadow Warrior. Up here in the attic zone, we have to collect more bones. And it seems like Freddy has all the same shaped bones. That cannot be healthy. The one way that you won't kill Freddy in this game is by making him see his reflection, which kills him like he's Mumra from the Thundercats. Yeah, I was never really into that one anyway, so I'm kind of glad that it's not represented here. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Grab these bones over here, but then we're going to need to wait until we fall asleep, because the last few bones are in kind of a difficult location, and we don't want to lose a bunch of lives getting them. You essentially get 20 lives in this game, you get 5 lives and then 3 continues on top of that, and you get additional lives for completing the houses, but we don't want to waste a bunch of them early, you may need those lives later. Once we're in the dream world, we can transform into the Shadow Warrior, and we'll be able to attack with a kick whenever we jump, and we can take out that Boggle enemy by throwing a star at him with the B button. That corner area can be pretty dangerous, so make sure to collect all the bones, and then head back here, and we'll head down into the basement. 
don't miss this bone over here on the left. I've definitely missed that one before, and it's pretty obnoxious to have to come all the way back here to get it. Watch out for the red blood that's dripping from the ceiling. At least I think it's blood. It could be acid, perhaps? In any case, it can damage you. But collect the few bones that you need down here in the basement, and it's time to fight the boss. Freddy's glove again. But this time, it's not tethered to a red strand of balls. The free-floating glove is a little more difficult. What you want to do is try to attack it with your jump kicks whenever it's low. If you hit it too high, you will take damage, so you want to kind of get used to using the Shadow Warrior's jump kicks. They are one of the most effective ways to deal with the bosses in this game. You can also attack it using the Acrobat and throw the Javelins at it, so I'll show you that. But you need to stay still for a moment whenever you throw the Javelins. So it seems a lot safer to use the Shadow Warrior to take out the glove. After you complete the first three houses, the locations that you need to go to will no longer be random, they will be completely fixed, so none of that we have to try houses until we figure out which one we need to go into stuff. This time we need to make our way all the way to the end of Elm Street and enter the Junkyard. The Junkyard is a common location from many of the Elm Street movies so of course it had to be included here. It's interesting that as we travel across Elm Street that so many of the enemies are random animals. I guess that Freddy does possess some animals in the movies, like there's a bird in Freddy's Revenge, but he doesn't really do it that often. So watch out for the rats or just punch them. Those rats are very punchable, although they're very large, they may actually be Nutrias. I know that this game was probably marketed towards young boys, but it is weird that you can only play as a female character if you play with three or four players, considering that most of the heroes from the Elm Street movies were girls, like Nancy Thompson, Kristen Parker, or Alice Johnson. Well, in any case, once you're inside the junkyard, make sure to grab those first couple bones. The bones can blend in a bit on the white vehicles that make up the platforms in this area. Punch out those two shamblers and then grab that bone, then make your way over to the right. You do not want to fall into any of the pits in the junkyard. They are instant death. Watch out for that falling stone. You want to jump between the two pieces right after it breaks. And make sure to grab this bone on top of the stack of tires. Then head over to the right and grab this bone. Then very quickly get out of there because two shamblers will descend on your position. You want to jump over this falling spike and then grab the bone from the right side. Then make your way to the right past the rat and grab another bone. There's a few falling rocks over here, and then a big stack of cars and trucks. There are three bones over here, so make sure you get all of them. The two that are down on top of the vehicles can be difficult to see. Then there's two more bones down here on that truck. Head over to the right. You can grab the coffee if you want to, but it's not very important. Would actually like to switch to the dream world pretty soon. And do not miss this bone on top of that car before jumping over this spike. Well, we grabbed that coffee anyway. Doesn't really make a big difference. Over here, there's a good spot where enemies will not attack you. And we can wait until we fall asleep right here. So I'm going to speed this up. The last leg of the junkyard has some difficult platforming. So we're going to want to be in one of our Dream Warrior forms to be able to get through it. So we're just going to wait here until we fall asleep. Nothing will hurt you here. And once we've entered the Dream Realm, let's try out the Necromancer this time. The Necromancer has this long, floaty jump and can also shoot some beams, so that's nice. But it's that big, long, slow jump that we're interested in that's going to make it a lot easier to get through the platforms here. Make sure to grab the last bone. If that wasn't the last bone, you're in trouble. It means you missed one, probably on top of one of the cars somewhere. 
so you're going to have to head back and find it. Once you're through that area, make your way to the right and it's time to fight the boss. This one is a giant Freddy Krueger bat. The Krueger bat will also summon smaller skeleton bats. And the best way to fight this guy, once again, is to use the Shadow Warrior. I like to hang out over on the right side, but if the bat is not flying low on the right side, you may need to try the left side instead. Just kind of watch and see which way it's going. It will swoop down and usually be on the low side when it enters one of the corners, so that's why I like to stay on the sides. Because if you attack it too high, you'll get hit. You also want to try to take out those bats with your jump kicks as well. You can try to throw a star at them too, but you don't want to be caught and able to move throwing a star and get hit by the main boss. Once the Freddy Bat is defeated, it's time to ninja vanish and head to Elm Street Cemetery. Watch out for all the bats outside though. They seem a little bit angry maybe that we defeated the boss bat. And here's the cemetery, press up to enter it. Much like the junkyard, the cemetery only has one level to it, so we don't have to go into an attic or a basement to finish this one. Unfortunately, there are a lot of open pits, and if you fall into the water, that is instant death. Come on Johnny Depp, learn to swim or something. Make your way to the right, take out that shambler and head to the top of this formation. This is a great spot to wait until we fall asleep and enter the dream realm. Whenever we fall asleep here, we're going to transform into the acrobat. There is a lot of skeleton enemies in this area called Skelos, and our necromancer actually can't affect the undead with his beams, but the javelins from the acrobat certainly can. Now the enemies near this first tombstone seem to spawn very quickly, so you just want to jump over those ones. Head over here and avoid that boom box. Take out that Skelos with your javelin, and then we're going to transform into the Necromancer and come down here on the bottom. You can shoot these little ghosts with the Necromancer. And we're going to need the Necro to jump over this wide pit. You could jump on that bubble, but it will break pretty quickly after you land on it, so it's a lot safer to just use the Necromancer and make the big jump with him. The Javelin will take out these Skelos, and then we can grab those bones. Then we'll head over to the right. We don't need to use that bubble for anything. Be very careful in this area. There's a rock that falls out of the sky on the highest platform, so you need to avoid that. Wait until right after it has broken. Come down here and grab the bone. If you weren't the acrobat or one of the dream warrior forms, you would have to use the bubble to get up there, but we don't have to use it at all as the acrobat since we have such a high jump. Head on over to the right. We've collected all the bones at this point, we just need to make it to the end and fight the boss. And the boss is Freddy's Ghost. The Freddy Ghost is a lot like the Freddy Bat that we just fought. He flies in a similar pattern and he even releases small ghosts, so we want to fight him in the same way. Use the Shadow Warrior and get him with your jump kicks. If you get good with the jump kicks with the Shadow Warrior, you're going to have no problem beating this game. The bosses are going to be very easy for you. So this is the best way to fight this guy. He does get faster and faster as it goes, and it will be a little bit harder to avoid getting hit as he gets low on health. Try to keep the small ghosts controlled, so take out those when you can. But you want to focus your kicks on the main boss, and just keep kicking until he goes down. Once he's defeated, grab the key, and it's time to make our way to Freddy's house. We're getting very close to the end now. Freddy's house is the next to the last level, so just make your way over to the one with the broken door and press up in front of it. Inside, we'll need to do another one of these house levels but this is the most difficult one yet. Freddy's house features a main house level, a basement area, 
another main house level, and then an attic to explore. So yeah, this is a big one. Head over to the right and avoid those drips. You want to stay on the bottom here and try to get behind this shambler before you jump over him. Punch out that spider and these two bats and then make your way to the left. Be careful to jump right onto the right side of that platform and get under the spikes. And then we're going to walk to the right here and go back up the steps and head over to the right. If you jump onto this platform, you can drop down to the bottom and just keep making your way over to the right. Collect that bone and you can just walk off the edge there. Head on up the stairs. Punch this spider. You can punch him right from the stairs. That's a good way to do it. And we need to head back to the left to collect some bones. So head on back. And there it is. Watch out. Grab that bone and then grab the second one. And you just want to drop down below and take the lower path up the stairs again. We can just drop down here and jump and grab this bone. The final bone is located on the far right near the exit here. So grab that bone, then jump back and press down to enter the basement. Freddy's house is far from over. There's only a few bones to find here and they're not very easy to miss. <sighs> Looks like we're falling asleep. But that's good. We can engage our dream warrior powers now. So turn yourself into the shadow warrior and we can easily take out these skeleton bats with our throwing stars. You need to just go underneath this red spider, it actually can't be killed. And a few stars ought to take out that skelos enemy. The gray or whitish spiders can be killed though, so we can take them out and then head down here at the bottom and make your way to the left to grab a few bones and then go back to the right. Only three more to find in this area. So grab this one above the spike very carefully. That's a tough one to get without getting hit. And watch out for these knives that are flying through the air. But make sure to grab that bone and head over to the right where we'll find the final bone, which is in this corner. So there it is. Grab that bone. If you jump past the dripping blood, you'll be able to stand in a space where you won't get damaged, but you need to go all the way to the top here and then jump back across to the left. That'll take you up to the main house area, part two. There's only a few bones to find in here as well, so head over to the left. You do not want to be on this platform when it goes all the way to the bottom, you'll die. So you want to carefully jump to it right when you think it's going to be emerging from below. And we hit this radio and it was probably a good time for it if we stayed in the dream realm too much longer. We probably would have had to fight Freddy. Now we're back to our normal boring selves though and we want to take the bottom floor here to go through these spiders and grab another bone. Jump across that gap, grab this bone. You don't need that power up on the right side, so just skip it. But you do need to get the bone on the bottom here. So head on down there and then be very careful not to get bumped by those flies when you're going back up on the platform. You do not want to be knocked into an instant death pit. Down here we can grab another bone, but avoid that dripping water. Or is it some kind of acid? I'm not sure. I'll just jump over this shambler, it's easier than punching him. And you definitely want to avoid the red ones, they are even more dangerous. Stay down here on the bottom where there's a full gauntlet of traps. Just take your time, to make your way between the spiders, and you should have no problem grabbing that last bone and unlocking the lightning field that prevents the entry to the stairway. How is Freddy producing a field of lightning when we're not in the dream? I don't think that it's canon, but he does look a little bit like the Emperor from Star Wars. Make your way across the platforms at the top, and head up the stairs into the attic. We have 12 bones to find here in the last leg of Freddy's house, so carefully make your way across and punch those spiders, and grab the bones as you see them. We're running out of sleep meter. So it looks like we're entering the dream realm again, but that's good because this is kind of a difficult area and it will be good to have access to all of our powers. 
Up here we can grab another bone. If you've been in the dream world for a long time, there is a radio there that can wake you up. You may just want to wake up and then allow yourself to fall asleep again, just to reset the Freddy counter. Use the Acrobat to get across those spikes. And we can use our Shadow Warrior to take out these ghosts as we jump. It's very nice to be able to attack as you're jumping, so the Shadow Warrior is by far our most powerful Dream Warrior form. Take out this Skellos enemy with your throwing stars or javelins before going across the radio, in case you accidentally bump into it. You probably will on the way back. Once you've grabbed the bone and we're back to the world of the living, we have six more to find. Well, make that five. Head on over to the right, there's another bone up here on the top, so stay on the upper path. There's going to be some dripping acid, and we want to punch this spider from this position and then drop down to get the bone at the bottom. Over here we can punch out another spider and get another bone below, and then we want to follow the lower path to find the next to last bone, which is over here on the right. We need to collect it from this side, because there's a wall over there that will block you from collecting it from the other way. Once you have it, head back the way you came, and you'll see that spider has respawned, and there's all kind of bats up here, so try to punch as many of them as you can, and then make your way across the top. Head over here, the last bone is down at the bottom, so we we'll need to drop down and head over to the left, being careful not to fall off on that platform. Head over to the right, and if you have all the bones, we'll be able to fight the next to last boss, this is Freddy's Head and Glove. This time there's not just one, but two flying bosses to defeat. The head actually drips acid on you as it flies around, but the glove has less hit points, so you want to try to take out the glove first. That way you only have one boss to deal with and it'll be a little bit easier. So, when possible, focus your attacks on the glove, but try to get hits in on either boss whenever you can. They'll be flying around the room, and if you're good at the jump kicks at this point, you should have no problem taking out this two-piece boss. The head is the only thing left now. Try to stay on the sides, you probably won't get hit by the drips then. And just keep on kicking. Kick, kick, kick. And that's it. The final key. And that key will open up Elm Street High School. The final stage. The school is to the left from Freddy's house, and deep within its basement we'll find a boiler room with a furnace that can get hot enough to cremate Freddy's bones and destroy him once and for all. But First, we need to make our way through this area, which looks a whole lot like the houses on Elm Street. I don't know why they would make the school look like someone's house. That doesn't make any sense. It seems like they may have gotten a little bit lazy with the graphics here at the end of the game. Make your way to the right across the top and grab a lot of bones up here, but you're going to need to go back the way you came and drop down to the bottom to collect those last bones down there as well. These bones are a little bit trickier to get, especially this one over on the right side. So what you want to do is wait right here until we fall asleep and enter the dream realm. Once we enter the dream world, we'll be able to transform into the necromancer and take advantage of his enhanced jumping abilities. That's going to make getting the bone that's over to the right a whole lot easier. And here we go. We're entering Freddy's Nightmare. And we'll transform into the Necromancer and jump across here. Summon that skeleton first by jumping a little bit and then jump back across the pit. You do not want to get bumped by that Skelos and end up in the pit. That's instant death. Use the Acrobat to jump across up here. The Acrobat is also very effective against the Skelos enemies. And over here, well, there's some lockers. Okay, that's kind of like a school. Good job, Rare. You did it. You figured out what a school is supposed to look like. Although I do think you could have been a little bit more creative with maybe the rest of the school design here. Made the last level look a little bit more special. 
But in any case, we're going to make our way to the right, collecting the bones as we go. Just keep grabbing them. And over here, there's only four left, and that's the exit. But we need to grab the last few bones before we can get out. Try to attack this red skelos. Grab that bone and then head over to the right, and the last three bones are going to be over here. There's two down on the bottom, and one that we'll be able to grab as we head back to the top. You don't actually need to use that platform when you're the acrobat, you can actually just jump up to the top. So that makes it a lot easier. We're going to head down the stairs across to the left, and you remember where that exit is. That's going to take us to the next zone. This looks a lot like another one of those house areas. We're running out of time on the Freddy counter, but there is a radio over here to the right that we should be able to grab, and there it is. Well, we almost had to fight him that time. We probably will have to fight him a little bit deeper into the school. The second floor of Elm Street High School is very similar to the first floor. So make your way to the right collecting the bones and watch out for those red shamblers that look a little bit like Michael Jackson from the Thriller video. We can grab this bone, but over here is another good spot to wait until we fall asleep so that we can take advantage of our Dream Warrior powers. So just wait here, we'll speed this up. And once you fall asleep, we're going to want to use the Acrobat. That's going to make it a lot easier to jump over those blockers to the right. So wait until you fall asleep. And then change over to the Acrobat. There we go. This area is going to be a whole lot easier now. Drop down to the bottom, watch out for those Freddy hands and then just jump straight up through the platform and head over to the right. There's a few bones on these window sills, so don't miss those. Only five more bones to go, so keep making your way to the right. Over here, there is a radio. It may not be a bad idea to grab the radio and then find a place to wait until you can go back into the dream world. That will reset the Freddy counter. But I do want to show you what happens when Freddy does catch you so that you know how to fight him. So I'm going to let it go this time. Head on over to the left and grab that bone. Only one more bone to go. Sometimes it seems like the game needs to load for a second and won't scroll to the right. But once you grab the last bone, you can drop through the trap door and enter Elm Street High School's basement. If you're not in the dream world right now, this is a good spot to wait until you fall asleep. You're going to want to use the acrobat form moving forward here. Keep collecting the bones, but this is the last bone collection in the game. Once we collect all the bones here, we won't have to find any more. And that song means that Freddy is coming for us. There's no radio down here to wake us up, so we're going to have to actually fight him this time. Down at the bottom, you don't have to collect these bones yet, but I want to show you over on the left, there's a little bit of fire. That's actually the exit to this area that we'll need to head back to later. But for now, Freddy is coming, and it's time to fight him. As a general rule, you don't want to have to fight Freddy, but he's actually pretty easy. If you attack him with the Acrobat, and you just attack rapidly with your Javelins, it seems like he'll walk through you most of the time when he gets close. Now if he jumps and lands right on you, you'll take damage, but you can pretty much just stand in one spot and just keep attacking Freddy rapidly, and he will go down quite quick. Make sure to collect this bone and jump before the platform drops out on the bottom, and then head over to the right where we will find the final bones in the game. If you didn't collect the ones near the exit, that's okay. We need to collect these ones first anyways. Head over to the right. That platform looks like it would drop out from underneath you, but it actually won't. It's safe. Carefully wait here for the claw to go back into the ground and then grab that bone. And there's one more on the far right. 
So head over, take out this skeleton bat. There's a red skelos at the bottom, take him out as well. And then up here, there's another boggle and the last bone. Once you have it, we want to head back to the left, where we'll finally be able to find the entrance to the boiler room. You can see that if you walk quickly, you can actually get over the gap there, but you do need to be careful that you don't jump right into the little space. You can actually fall through if you're not careful. So jump up here, quickly walk across, and just keep making your way back to the left. We shouldn't have to worry about running out of time and facing another Freddy fight. We'll have plenty of time to make it to the boiler room. So just come over to the left, jump over that spike. We don't want to take a lot of damage now. There are a whole bunch of bosses down at the bottom that we're going to have to fight. So hopefully you have a lot of lives left at this point. It could get a bit dicey if you don't. Stay on the bottom here. Carefully avoid the hands that come out of the ground. Take your time here. And make your way to the end. And you're just going to drop off the ledge. That's it. And immediately, we'll be fighting the first boss, which is the Freddy Claw attached to the chain of red balls. You want to stay as far left as you can against this guy. It seems like he can reach a bit farther this time than he may have been able to the first time we fought him. But he'll go down pretty quickly, and you don't want to waste taking any damage against him. Then we have to fight Freddy's head, also tethered to the red chain of balls. This boss can be a pain, so attack him as quickly as you can, and try to take out any of those tongues that he throws at you as soon as they appear, so that you don't have to deal with like, four or even five of them bouncing around on the screen. Take out this boss, and it's time to move forward, where we'll fight the third boss, Freddy's Free Floating Glove. We remember how to defeat this boss, Transform into the Shadow Warrior and use your jump kicks on it whenever it's flying low. Be careful whenever it flies high. Sometimes you can get hit if you attack it on the wrong spot. Just keep up the jump kicks and this boss will go down very quickly. Head on over to the right. You don't want to head back to the left. You may accidentally have to fight the boss again, so don't do that. Always after you fight the boss, head over to the right. And here is the Freddy Bat. Just like the last time, you want to attack him with the Shadow Warrior using the Jump Kicks. I feel like this is one of the more difficult bosses in the game. For some reason, those bats can be pretty annoying. So just try to stay away from them, stay on the sides of the screen when possible, and get in as many attacks on the boss whenever you have an opportunity. And once this guy is defeated, we will be able to move on to the next boss. Come on, one more kick. There it is. Alright, the next boss is the Freddy Ghost. We're going to use the same attack plan that we used on the Freddy Bat, so just keep using the jump kicks. Try to catch him in a pattern where he's just going around in a circle and you're just kind of kicking as he comes across. But the ghost does start to move fast as it runs low on health, so it can get kind of difficult there at the end. So make sure you don't get hit at the beginning when you're fighting the ghost, so that if you take a few hits at the end, it's not a big deal. Also, try to clear any of those ghosts that come out of the thing. If you get a lot of ghosts on the screen, it could be problematic. There's only one more boss before Freddy, and it's the glove and the head combined. So once again, the glove seems to have a bit less health than the head, so it's easier to take out the glove first. But the head is more potentially dangerous because it drips that blood on you, which is a very dangerous thing that you have to avoid. Once the glove is gone though, it's a lot easier, so I like to take out the glove first, and then we can focus our firepower on attacking the head when we don't have the second boss to worry about. So just keep on kicking that head. Take that, Freddy. And it won't be long until this guy goes down, and we'll be able to move on to the final boss encounter. 
that's it. Here it is. That's the boiler where we want to cremate Freddy's bones. And the final boss is Freddy himself. And if you had to fight Freddy at all because he caught you in one of the dreams, we're going to use the same strategy of attack here. Turn into the acrobat and just rapidly attack him with the javelins. It seems like he'll just walk through you if you're attacking him rapidly enough and you'll take almost no damage. But now that we've shown you the normal way to get through the boss gauntlet, let me show you how to do the boss gauntlet skip. You won't be able to skip the first claw boss, but he's easy anyway. And you can skip Freddy at the end, but that would softlock the game, so you certainly don't want to do that. But you will be able to skip the other bosses if you do these precise movements. Go to about the fourth of those little rungs, and we want to stop right here before these two little rocks, and we're going to take a quick step to the left, and then when we head to the right, we won't spawn the boss. Now if we go to a different precise position, before these two rocks, if we stop here and then take a quick step to the left, we won't spawn the third boss. So keep coming this way, and this one is between these two smokestacks right here before that little one dot. Take a step to the left and then move to the right, and we won't spawn the fourth boss. And this one's right before that second smokestack right between those two rocks. Take a step left, and then we won't spawn that boss. And this one is right near the middle smokestack between those two rocks there, you see? Take a step to the left, and that will take us all the way to the final boss without fighting any of the bosses in between. Now we just need to rapidly attack Freddy with our javelins, and we will easily be able to finish the game. Now, if you mess any of those up, you may have to fight the boss, but if you can skip even a few of the bosses, that's going to make this final boss gauntlet a lot easier. And that's it. We've done it. We've beaten Nightmare on Elm Street. All we can do now is sit back, relax, and enjoy the cheesy ending. Well, I hope this video was able to help you finally beat A Nightmare on Elm Street and put an end to Freddy's depraved dreams. If it did, make sure to give it a like and make sure to subscribe for more videos because evil never truly dies. And that's why we'll be back again next week with another video game you can beat. Thanks for watching.